Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Welcome back to Garage Noise. And today I'm gonna to share with you exactly how to prepare a used door for paint. There's a lot of information in this video, so let's dig in and get started. This is the repair we're working on today. It's a Chevy Colorado with a damaged fender and door. We're replacing the fender with a new fender, but we're replacing the door with a used part. Now you can see this part has several different chips and nicks in it. It also has some minor door dings that we're gonna to repair today. We've got the uh, Chevy Colorado door here. We had some chips and nicks that we sanded out. Some of these were a little dents, like there's a little dent there. So what we did is we feather edged these out 180 grit sandpaper to feather edge this out, or 220 grit. Basically what you're doing is you're breaking down the layers of paint so you have a gradual transition into the rest of the panel so it's, it makes it smooth, okay? Now we are still gonna put some icing over some of these areas because a few layers of paint on this and there's also some dents in some of these areas. So we're gonna cover these with some icing. So Darius is gonna mix up some icing. We're gonna lay a thin coat over these We'll block them out, and then we're gonna primer this entire door before we go ahead and paint it. Now he's already sanded the underside, so we've got this all prepped out for some primer or sealer, or whatever we're gonna do. I'll probably just seal the underside before we put our base coat on, but the outside I wanna get some primer on. We've got a little of the USC icing, polyester glazing putty. It can be applied over bare metal. So you wanna use about 2% hardener or 50 to one. That's probably a little bit much, but that's okay. We want it to dry quickly. Fold it in until it's all one uniform color or press it out on the palette here to kind of remove some of the air pockets so we don't have any pinholes or anything. This is a really smooth product. Sand's really easy, so it's good for small dings and actually little chips, you can actually sand them down and just fill those little chips with them. A little bit on our spreader here. Those low areas film. Okay, that's it. We'll let it dry. Block these out. We're gonna sand this out. This took about 20 minutes. It's pretty dry. We're gonna use this Cubitron 2 180 grit sandpaper, and I'm just gonna block these areas, block them flat. We might use a little bit of guide coat to show us our low areas, but it's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna block in an X pattern, get it level, and then we'll feel over it, make sure it's ready for some primer. Okay, so this right here has a little bit of a high area right here, a little bit of high area, a little bit of a low. We might need a little bit more filler, but I'm gonna slap this down. Okay, so Darius mixed up some primer. We got the R500 here. This is a low volume, low pressure paint gun. We're gonna keep the air pressure low when we're spraying this primer, we don't want a bunch of overspray. Uh, we're using U-Pole 2K primer. This is a direct to metal primer. It also can be used as a sealer. We've, we're using it as a primer surfacer in this case. So mix it four to one to one, that's the primer surfacer. Four parts primer, one part activator, and then one part reducer. Okay, so what we have is the used door here. We repaired the chips and scratches, and now we've primed it, and we're gonna block over this to make sure we've got everything smooth the way we wanted to. There was a few dents in this, 
Uh, so we use the polyester glazing putty, the icing, to repair those. I can still feel there's something here, so we're going to have to address that. So we'll block over that and see what we need to do there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to block over this. We're going to start off with the long block and some 320 grit sandpaper. We don't want to break through the primer if we can help it. But what we're going to do is block over this in an X pattern, all those large, these large surface areas. Some of these smaller areas we'll do with a hand block, a smaller block. Uh, but we're gonna, we are going to put a guide coat on it. This is just an inexpensive uh, dry guide coat by Dur Durgold. We'll spread it over this thing so we can see if there's any high or low areas. Now, you may not want to go to this extreme. This, it's not really extreme to me because we want this panel to be straight. We're doing this for a customer if it's your own vehicle. You could sand this down with an orbital sander and some 320 grit sandpaper if you're not concerned with any waves or imperfections. But I'm going to show you how to do it properly so you get a nice straight panel for your repair. We just want to cover all the surface area and this will expose any high or low areas in our bodywork. And it'll also help us to know when our primer is smooth and the texture has been removed, okay? So we're blocking in an X pattern. You wanna do long strokes like this if you can. You wanna distribute even pressure over the surface of the block. So you don't wanna be pressing on the ends, then you'll have a high area in the center you're not where you're not blocking as much as you're blocking on each end. So you want to distribute even pressure and you don't have to put a lot of pressure on this. All you're doing is letting the sandpaper do the work. There's going to be a little bit of a low area here. So let's block over this. I'll show you what we got. Okay, so you can see right here where that low area is right in the center. There's a little bit of a ding left still there. Let's block it a little more. Now you can block this until you break through. If you break through, then you know you gotta make some adjustments. You're gonna have to fill it, add another coat of primer. And we can see it's gradually coming out. I don't think it's gonna come out all the way. Okay, so we have all the block sanding done. Let me show you what we have. We have a little bit of a wave right here. We're gonna do a little something with that. I think primer would take that out, but we have to do a little fill right here. Just a thin coat of icing. There's a little bit of a low area right there. All this is good. All this feels good. The main part of the door feels good. The only other thing is we have a little bit of a dent still remaining right here. Well, that's a little ding. So we need to do a skim coat of the icing right over that and we'll block that out. Then we'll probably do a light coat of primer over this just to get it all one uniform color. Then we just have to do a 600 grit sand on this with the orbital sander and interface pad, which is a soft foam pad, just to get it smoothed out. And then this side will be ready for paint. So I wanna sand over these areas with some 180, some 180 grit sandpaper, just to promote a little bit more adhesion. Okay, we'll mix up a little bit of icing. Okay, this uh, polyester glazing putty, the icing is cure now. We're gonna go ahead and sand it with a smaller block here on my vacuum system with some 180 grit sandpaper. This sands really easy with 180, so let's go ahead and block this down. We'll show you how it comes out. Now I want to feel over it, and I'm feeling for any waves or imperfections. I don't feel any. 
I'm gonna block it a little bit more with a long block and some 320 grit. We're gonna cover more surface area with this and refine those 180 grit scratches before we primer it. Okay, now that little ding is filled. It feels straight. I'm using the flat part of my hand and I'm running quickly over this dent. Your hand glides a little bit better with gloves. And I can feel that there's just maybe a little bit of a wave, not much. When we primer this and block it, we'll be fine. So let's go ahead and take care of this filler over on this side. Block this with some 320 to refine those scratches. Now what we need to do is we just need to clean this door with some isopropyl alcohol. Make sure it's nice and clean before we apply two coats of 2K urethane primer. We're using the U-Pole uh, System 20, uh, four to one high build primer. We're also using the Spray IQ disposable cup system. I've got a video on that if you want to check that out. Um, this thing's leaking a little bit, but this primer is four to one. If you want to use it as a primer surfacer or a thinner primer, you can do four to one to one. So we're going to find the mixing ratio at the bottom of this cup four to one to one, and we're gonna be using that mixing ratio. We'll put in our four parts primer, add our hardener. This is just standard hardener. We'll fill this up to the desired amount. So now that's a four to one mixing ratio. And then we'll add our reducer. We're just using some Master Pro Urethane Reducer. And we're going to go just under the one, so it's going to be a little bit thicker, but... There we go. There we go. Now it's locked in. We're going to... We'll add our collar. Tighten it down. We'll be using the R500. This is a low-volume, low-pressure paint gun. If you haven't checked out this gun, check it out. If you're a DIYer at home, working out of your garage or with a small compressor, and you want limited overspray and you have limited air, this is the perfect gun. Okay, we're gonna wash this down with some isopropyl alcohol. We've got a clean microfiber towel here. Now the gun settings I'm gonna use for primer, I'm gonna have it about 20 PSI, about two and a half turns out on my fluid volume. My fan pattern will be wide open. And the tip on this particular gun is a 1.3. This U-Pulse sprays pretty well with a 1.3. I haven't seen a need to switch over to 1.4. I may try that in the future. Okay, so now we've got our used door looking much better. We've taken care of those chips, nicks, and scratches. We've straightened out those door dings. We made sure those were uh, block sanded properly and totally removed. We put two coats of urethane primer on it, and now we just need to prep out this primer for paint. How we're gonna achieve that was gonna sand over it with some 600 grit sandpaper. Now, the reason I use 600 grit is it's coarse enough to produce scratches that are gonna allow that paint to adhere properly, but it's not so coarse that it's gonna allow those scratch to, scratches to show through into the paint. Now you can do it by hand. You do, do not have to use an orbital sander to do this. You could block it if you wanted with 600. You could wet sand it with 600 grit sandpaper or just hand sand it. Now we're gonna go over the frame of this. We've already cut in the underside. That's in another video.
This door is now ready to be painted and cleared, and if you want tips and tricks on how to paint and clear your part with less orange peel, check out this video now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.